Good morning. Oh, I was a little weak. Let's, you know. Good morning. <laughs> hey, I'm really glad that everybody's here today. There is a, a singer and an author named Zayn Malik. And here's what he, uh, he wrote here about a year ago. He said, there comes a time in our lives when we understand that it's time to turn the page. There comes a time when we realize we've been stuck on the same page for a long, long time. Now, obviously that's kind of an analogy, but uh, what we're gonna get to do today is let's see if we can get unstuck, if we happen to be stuck on a, on a particular page or a particular chapter in our lives. It's time to turn the page. So uh, I asked Geraldine if she'd come up and light the candle for us just to get things started. So as Geraldine is lighting the candle, it becomes this nice reminder that there's a time when we get unstuck in our lives. There's a time when what we want to do is turn inside, turn inward, and just sort of jump into that divine flow of the Spirit of God that's within us. Because that, that's what it is that makes things better, makes things more easy, just the way it always should be. Because we want to make sure that as we live our lives, that we're living our lives and not somebody else's interpretation of what our life should be. Would you join me in an opening prayer? And just as we get ready to pray, let's just be here right now. We all have things going on in our, on in our lives. Let's just set them aside for, a, for the next hour or so. And let's just be one with the Spirit of God that's deep within us. So Spirit of God, we always start with thank you. Thank you for all the people you've brought into my life. Thank you for all the gifts that you've brought into my life. Help me understand what it means to move into this divine flow of the Spirit of God. Help me at all times to try and move with that Spirit, with that feeling, with that divine flow. And so it is, God. So it is. Amen. And let me just mention we have our, our prayer vessel right here. And uh, that's for prayer requests. So if you have a prayer request for yourself or for someone else or a situation in your life or a situation in the world, I encourage you just to uh, write out one of the prayer request forms, put it in here, and, and we'll put this uh, right out in the hallway after the service is over. Okay, please stand if you can and help us sing our opening song, a song of praise. One, two, one.
So stay standing, stay standing. We get to do our next song. Right where I belong. and I am the celebration assistant for today. <laughs> yeah. All right, we, I, we love it that you are here on this beautiful, glorious, wonderful Sunday. So thank you for being here. I kind of feel sorry for all those Bloomsday people, don't you? <laughs> Not doing that. Mm -mm. All right. Welcome to Unity Center of Spiritual Growth, where all people who wish to worship here are welcome. We strive to live love and uplift lives. We are an inclusive and affirming church, and we bless people of all races, all sexual orientations, colors, political beliefs, or anything else they or you may have been judged on in the past. We simply welcome everyone who wants to pursue their spiritual path. Yeah. So let me introduce our musicians for today. Awesome, I'm standing in front of a couple of them to get the right paper. So over here we have, oh, over here we have William and Cheryl Kirby. Yes, thank you. And on guitar and harp we have Ken Curtis. Yes. And we have Gwen and Paul Gathercole over there. Yeah. And we have Steve Curto on drums. Yeah. And back in the booth, uh, supporting us with lights and PowerPoint and sound and video streaming, we have Jim Sullenberger, Brian Wright, Tammy Savage. Thank you for all of you do. And also, thank you to everyone who makes this Sunday service happen. We appreciate you all because it does take a lot of volunteers for a Sunday service, so thank you all of you who help out. 
So, if we have anyone here for the first time today, we want to thank you for being here. We're glad to have you join us, and we hope you have a great time. And we do have welcome packets for you, so if you feel comfortable enough raising your hand, one of the greeters will bring you a welcome packet. Anybody? Yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah. Raise them up there so we can see who you are. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to you. So, and also welcome to you who may be first time here on live stream. So, hi out there. Everybody wave. All right. It's good. You can let us know on live stream if you're here for the first time by uh, clicking on the connect with us tab that's on the website. So, thank you for joining us today, too. So, hopefully, you all saw the announcements that were scrolling describing the upcoming activities on this screen before the service. So, if not, they are listed in your program and on our website. So, join us and get involved. It's a great way to get to know all these wonderful people. Yes. So, let me draw your attention to a few announcements, however. We do have some wonderful opportunities at Unity and I will share some of the highlights. If you want more information, just go to our website, which is unitycenter.org. So, first and foremost, Betty Willingham, who I believe is watching us on live stream, sends her thank yous to all of you who signed her birthday cards and wished her a wonderful 100th happy birthday. So, please. Hi, Betty. We love you and miss you. So, a celebration of life service for longtime Unity member Richard Kachansky is scheduled for this coming Saturday, May 7th at 12 o'clock noon. So please join Richard's family and friends for some sacred reflection and a celebration of his life and relationships. The service will be held in the sanctuary here, followed by light refreshments in the Friendship Hall, and all are welcome to come. He was a great man. Next Sunday, May 8th, is Mother's Day. On this special day, Susie Weller has agreed to join us to present a first-hand lesson on motherhood. <clears throat> I think anybody that's been through that can offer <laughs> helpful hints. So anyway, her talk uh, will focus on celebrating the divine feminine and the many aspects of motherhood. So that'll be great. Our spiritual leader, Dennis Ashley, will present a three-part series on the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, learn how and why the Dead Sea Scrolls were created and how they relate to biblical archaeology and theology. Their discovery and how they became known reads like something out of an adventure story. So to register, please add your name to the... Uh, clipboard that's being passed around, or afterwards, it, I'm sure it will be out in the hallway and you can sign up there. So that does sound really fascinating. The Decoration Committee planning meeting is May 15th, so those who are interested in joining uh, can sign up in the hallway as well. Then on Saturday, May 21st, starting at 10 a.m., we are having a cleanup day. Now that our community has expanded, we need to organize our combined resources. We also want to clean up our grounds in preparation for spring and summer activities. So put on your dungarees and grab your work gloves and join in the fun. This service project is a great opportunity to strengthen our bonds of unity and get reacquainted. So um, do we know if we need to bring tools to that as well? Yes. Yes, so bring tools. Dungarees, gloves, fun, and tools. All right, so Tammy Savage, I think you have an announcement. I'd like to call you up. Come on down. I just want to let you guys know, we put one of these in the bulletin for you guys. I realize that summer is starting to call, the lakes are calling, all the trails are calling, um, and then you, you miss church for about two or three times, you go, oh, wait a minute, how many times did I miss, and, and, and how much do I, uh, do I owe as a member? And, and this is really convenient. I've used this for three years now. It's really nice. You, you sign in your name, and you give it to Geraldine in the office, 
and it comes out automatically and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about writing a check or did I bring my checkbook or how much change do I have in the car? Let me dig. Um, it's done automatically and uh, we'll give you a statement at the end of the year for your taxes. It's really, really, really convenient. So I would suggest it to everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Tammy. So let's see. It's first Sunday of May. That means it's birthday Sunday. Does anybody here or online have a birthday this month? And if you do, please stand because we want to sing to you and honor you by singing God Danced. Yes, there's one. birthdays they're awesome all right we are now going to have a few minutes to meet and greet each other and um, Steve will ring the gong over there when we want you to return to your seats so please stand and say hi to your friends and meet somebody new <laughs> try hitting that gong once in a while that's kind of fun all right so every Sunday we do have someone from the congregation come up and read us a blessing before uh, we go into meditation so today it is Val Podesta so please come on up We have all heard it before, that we are spiritual beings on a human journey. But today, let's take that understanding to a deeper level. Because when we really get it that we are spiritual beings, there is no problem too hard for us to handle. When we really grasp that it is the Spirit of God that the Spirit of God is our constant guide, all our difficulties fall away. All we have to do is ask. 
Well, let me be more precise. All we have to do is ask and mean it. The words are easy, but meaning it, that's the journey of a lifetime, isn't it? And so it is. Namaste. Please join us in, O oh God, great is thy power. So let's take a few minutes now and move into meditation. I invite you to close your eyes and put down anything that you might be holding. Just to give yourself permission to just move into this communion with the Spirit of God that's deep within you. So breathing in. I'm breathing out. Breathing in. I'm breathing out. And as we breathe in, we breathe in that, that power that rhythm, that flow of the universe. We breathe in that spark of life that ignites us and challenges us. And yet at the same time, it soothes us. this power that's deep within us, this power of the Spirit of God within us, it can't really be explained, but somehow it fills us up. 
somehow it touches every piece of our life. And it brings such calm, such peace, and such knowing, a, a great sensation of knowing the depths of ourselves. the deepest part of who we are and, and what we are. It's the power of God that touches our lives from the inside out and fills us with that great power. So let's take a moment in the silence just to be with that, that sensation, that feeling, and just experience it and just not try to understand it, but just be with it in the silence. Spirit of God, you, you touch our lives. You move us and you grow us. You teach us calm and somehow you, you teach us the experience of love. A sensation of love deep within us that we express to others. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Namaste. It's really just really powerful, really gentle. Well, today I wanted to talk about living with this divine flow. And it's a phrase we've all heard at one time or another. But here's one way to describe it. There was this four-year-old boy named Jimmy. And uh, yeah, Jimmy was he, was, he was pretty cool. He was fun. He was four years old. He was a rascal. Uh, and uh, one time his mom and dad bought him, you know, one of those pretend cars. It was a big one, you know, you could get in it and he could, you know, he could push it around the house, he could be in it and drive it around the house and it, it had a, you know, pretend steering wheel and it had a pretend horn and even had a pretend bell and I mean, it was just great. Now, when Jimmy first got it, for the first hour or so, he wasn't exactly sure what he was supposed to do. But it didn't take him long before he got into it. And, and then that was what he did. He just, he rode that pretend car around the house all the time. You know, and he'd, he'd ring the bell, and he'd honk the horn, and you know, one time he just really got into it, and, and you could hear him go, hey buddy, pick a lane. <laughs> and that's when his mom got kind of concerned. Yeah. I think we all sort of have those toys and we even continue them on into our adult lives. I think often what started out as a pretend game, I think oftentimes it becomes real. We can hardly separate what was pretend and what was real. I, I remember when I got out of college, I can remember 
the, the first sort of professional job that I got. And somehow I knew it was a game, but you know what? I didn't care. I mean, I just wanted to get into it, and I, I, I wanted it to be exciting. I can remember telling myself they were going to be so happy they hired me. <laughs> and even though I knew it was kind of a game, it only took me about, I don't know, maybe two or three days, and I was into it. And I forgot that it was a game. Ever had any aspect of your life where that's what happens? Where you get into it so deeply and you kind of forget it's really just a game. It's just pretensies. You know, but we get such drama. You know, and we, oh, I must get that raise. I, I must get that particular project. Oh, you must love me. And if you don't love me, then something's wrong with you. <laughs> I think one of our jobs in life is just to kind of break out of that notion of pretend. Is to see through all the different kinds of things that we do. And to say, of course it's important, we're here, but it's a game. And there's times when what we need to do is try to understand what's the best way to break out of that awareness that it's a game. And I do think that it's by moving into this divine flow. Because somehow when we do that, somehow when we really feel that experience of God emerging from us and flowing through us, that's when we start discovering what's real. That's when we start discovering what counts in terms of all sorts of things. Now, I, I think probably every religious icon out there, every, every religious figure has talked about the spirit of God within, the kingdom of heaven can be found within. Uh, but maybe the, <clears throat> the, maybe the person who talked about it the most was Lao Tzu uh, in Taoism. And, and uh, just so we're aware of that, it's T-A-O, uh, but the T gets pronounced like a D. I, I get questions about that all the time. Is it Tao or is it Tao? It's Tao. <laughs> um, so it's Taoism. And, and if you take a look at Lao Tzu, we're not even quite sure if he was real or not. So he's sort of a semi-legendary character. Would have been around the 4th century BCE. And uh, here's the legend. The legend is that Lao Tzu got, uh, was a famous philosopher within China, but he just got tired of all the games. And he wanted to get to what's real. So he decided to, to leave China. And so the legend is that the guard recognized him as he was trying to leave uh, the country and said, uh, you know, no, master, you have to write down everything that you know before you can leave. And so the legend is that, he, is that Lao Tzu went by the side of the road and wrote uh, the book, the founding book of Taoism, which, was, uh, which is the Tao Te Ching. And so if you take a look at the, the words of the Tao Te Ching, Dao means the way, and uh, Ching means the book. So it's the book of the way. And, and what did he mean by that? Well, he meant that, uh, just as I said, there, there is a flow to life, a spirituality to life that can hardly be grasped. In fact, it gets sort of odd a, a little bit to talk about it, because if you try and talk about something spiritual, we have to use physical words to describe it, right? So we have to talk about something that is unlimited with very limiting words. And so what happens is, you know, you describe it to, to somebody and they go, well, <laughs> you're kind of woo-woo, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. And the correct answer is, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> so that's also in Taoism, which is to try and discover the way, the rhythm of life, the that's the sensation of life. And so what Lasso was saying is there's a rhythm to everything, an ebb and a flow. And of course, with, with Taoism, you have the yin and the yang, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about in a couple of weeks. But we do understand that, yeah, the yin and the yang talks about the sort of the opposites of life. And yet at the same time, what that does is it, it soothes us to understand that we move back and forth between these opposites all the time. So the Tao means the way, and uh, the idea was let's find a way to get into the rhythm, the ebb and the flow of the universe. 
How do we align ourselves, though? I mean, it's, it's words, right? But how do you do that? Well, for, um, for Lao Tzu, he was able to, to, to explain that. And so he talked about the three treasures. And so the three treasures were compassion and frugality. Uh, and uh, the reason I'm stopping for a second is on frugality. That's, that's kind of interesting because it's not something that we do really well in the United States, right? I mean, we're good capitalists, right? <laughs> but he would say, no, the, the best life is a simple life. The best life is uh, not worrying about, let's see, does my house have enough bathrooms? Does it have enough bedrooms? Uh, he said, no, be, be frugal, live a, live a frugal life. And then the, the third treasure was humility. And he's saying, yeah, the, the, the best life, the way that we move into that divine flow of the universe was to be more humble. And, and what he said was, it, it doesn't mean that you can't be good at whatever it is that you do. He just said, but take it with a grain of salt. And so uh, he said with humility, he has had this great phrase. Let me, uh, let me make sure I can say it just right here. He said, the flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Uh, ah, I like that. That was pretty good. Now, just to uh, take a look at, at, at Taoism and this flow of the universe, here's also what he said. He said, the meaning of Taoism can hardly be explained. So the opening lines of the Tao Te Ching are, the Tao that can be spoken of is not the Tao. And then uh, the name that can be defined is not the unchanging name. So we say, if you can talk about it perfectly, then you're not describing anything that's worth much. He said, what's real is very difficult, very complex. So... As I said before, other people sort of grabbed a hold of this idea of this divine flow moving within us. Uh, if we uh, switch over to uh, the United States for a while, the, uh, the transcendentalists, uh, about the 1820s, 1830s, 1840s, they started um, really being attracted to this idea of the divine flow. And uh, the most famous one was Ralph Waldo Emerson. But there was also Henry David Thoreau and Louisa May Alcott. It was a rule, you had to have three names. Yeah. <laughs> so in, uh, in 1836, they, they um, founded the Transcendental Club in Boston. And the Transcendental Club was mostly comprised of Unitarian clergy and uh, some Unitarian intellectuals. And they really, really liked the, the reason and the pure logic of the Unitarian Church at that time. But they said, it just seems a little dry. They wanted a touch of spirituality. And so that was why they founded the, the, the Transcendental Club, to say, yeah, let's, let's base our lives on reason and logic, but let's have a little spirituality in there too. So... Um, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson probably became the most uh, famous of the bunch. And, and uh, a lot of you know Unity's five major principles, and this, the second major principle was that people are inherently good. People are born naturally good. Uh, th that's the second Unity principle. came straight out of Ralph Waldo Emerson's writings uh, because uh, that's what they talked about at the Transcendental Club, that people were naturally good. So when we... Uh, Look at those, those speakers, those writers. They were really interested in how do we move into the divine flow? What, what is it that we do? And so they, they, they like the ideas from Lao Tzu of compassion and frugality and humility, but they talked a lot more about that too. And, and so 1820s, 1830s, 1840s, they really started advocating a lot more time in meditation, a lot more time in prayer, because they felt like that was the way that you moved into this divine flow. That that was the way you got into touch with what's inside. And uh, they said, it's not that we're rejecting external ideas and external sources. To move into the divine flow is not to reject science or advances in science. It's not to reject other people's ideas. 
is to not be enslaved by them. You know, you, you, you get good technology that, that comes along. Yeah, of course you uh, uh, adopt it if it seems to fit you, but you just don't get enslaved by it. And, and that's, that's the trick, isn't it? To, to be open to external information, external ideas, external sources, and yet at the same time to balance that with what's going on inside of you. And uh, I mean, I think that we work with that all of our lives. I, I know that everybody in the room here has been pretty open to outside ideas, changes, influences. Otherwise, we'd still all be in the first grade, right? I mean, you know, it's kind of like, oh, we understand that, that life goes on and we learn new ideas. And so uh, that's the balancing act. That's how we get in touch. That's one more way that we get in touch with this divine flow is to be able to understand what's going on inside of us, what's going on outside of us, and how do we match up the two? How do we do what makes the most sense for us? So um, we're um, free to understand a principle that our good does not come to us, but comes through us. And, and, and that is that divine flow, that is that spirit of God. I, I, as I've talked about the divine flow, I've often thought it, it really does kind of bring up the idea of the seven chakras, right? And that you have these uh, chakra literally means a spinning wheel of energy. And so going to Hinduism and Buddhism, if what we do is we take a look at those seven major chakras through the body, it, that makes sense that this energy of life, this energy of spirituality would move through us, flow through us. So uh, as, as that energy of life moves through us, as we balance external ideas, external advances with what's going on inside of us, one of the things I think that we do that, that makes the most sense is to get rid of old tapes, to get rid of the old ideas and the old thoughts that really no longer serve us. And that's not so easy to do sometimes, to try and sort through all of those um, thoughts. Because if we take a look at, at awareness versus thoughts, I mean, it's, it's really complex. So I wanted to mention that when we take a look at thoughts, I mean, they go on all the time, don't they? I mean, it never stops. I mean, we, we can just keep thinking and keep thinking. What's, what's the latest buzzword the last five or 10 years? Mo uh, monkey mind, monkey chatter. Uh, and yeah, it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. We are not our thoughts. Instead, what's closer to describing us is awareness. And what awareness refers to is that's that part of us that's aware of all those thoughts going on. You know, that's that little piece that looks back and says, oh yeah, and, and watches and observes and understands. I think with thoughts, thoughts are that, that animal that wakes us up at two o'clock in the morning and says, and now for your listening pleasure, yeah. let's, go through, let's go through all of the major failures you've had throughout your life. <laughs> but that part that we call awareness just watches and observes and understands. We're closer to being awareness than we are to being thoughts. And that's really useful to remember. When we, when we start separating those out, that's when we get lots of analogies that we've heard over the centuries. The one that seems to come out of the Eastern philosophies is be the part of you that watches your thoughts float down a stream on leaves. And when you see that thought, you just acknowledge it. But you don't get tied up in it. You know, you, you don't think you're a failure or think that you're a success because a particular thought has floated by. It's just a thought. Yeah. And there's been other analogies to the thoughts are like clouds up in the sky. We watch them and we see them constantly changing and we see them dissipate. But the awareness piece is the part that's watching the clouds. It's not, it's not identifying with the clouds. Or this is the one that I really like. And matter of fact, I'm even going to invite you to close your eyes for about a minute, okay? And just imagine this, because this is a great way of understanding the difference between thoughts 
and awareness. Imagine that you're in a movie theater and up on the screen is your life. Up on the screen is all your thoughts and you are in the fifth row and you're watching them. You're watching all the thoughts on that movie screen that's playing in front of you. When you do that, when you watch the thoughts, awareness is more like that person, that individual sitting in the fifth row. It's the watcher of the thoughts. Now, if you really want to get weird, imagine this, that at one point, there's a piece of you that separates from that person sitting in the fifth row and just kind of moves back to the 15th row. And now that silent witness watches awareness and watches the thoughts up on the screen. It just watches it all. Okay, you can open your eyes now. But isn't that an interesting sort of an example about what it means to really watch your thoughts and, and sometimes to watch yourself watching your thoughts? That's that part that's way back there. <laughs> the, so somebody asked me here a few days ago as I was getting ready, well, well, what's the big deal? Why do we want to separate thoughts and awareness? And I said, because I think when we become more aware of this awareness piece, that's what lets us move into this divine flow much more easily. The thoughts just make us jump all over the place. So divine flow, moving into that divine flow becomes a principle. And this principle of how spirituality works, this principle of how we live our lives, it's really interesting, I think, because um, as we start getting more spiritual, I think there comes a point when we decide, okay, I really want to do the spirituality thing, but, but I've got a few tips for God. And so you say, you know, God, I understand. I mean, I really want to move into this divine flow. It's really important to me. I've got a couple of tips for you, God. And there's just some things that maybe you hadn't thought about. And, you know, I understand you're all holy and pure and sacred because, you know, you're God. But um, it would really sort a lot of things out if you could help me win the lottery. Yeah, yeah I mean, I promise to keep being a spiritual. Yeah. Or if you could uh, get me that job that I've been applying for, or, or if, if you get that beautiful woman over there to fall in love with me, that'd be great. Uh, there's so many things where we kind of offer them as tips or bargaining chips, right? Okay, hey, you got, <laughs> yeah, I know I said that if I win the lottery, I'll give 10% to the church. Tell you what, I'll give 50% to the church, okay? <laughs> but uh, just help me win. Yeah. <laughs> We do a lot of bargaining things, don't we? Yeah. And so what moving into the divine flow means is that it's time to get past bargaining chips. It's time to get past tips and understand that this divine flow of how life works is something that just is. It's something that we align ourselves with. We can't, we can't use it. We can't manipulate it. And so what that does is it means, oh, so if, if I really got into the divine flow, I, you know, I can't trick it, I can't manipulate it, I can't make it work for me. And the answer is correct, you, you can't. It's sort of like the principle of gravity. Gravity just is. And, you know, it's the same for everybody. And you can align yourself with gravity, you can figure out how it works, but you can't say, Jed, I would really like it if gravity worked a little differently for, you know, for, for Janet than it did for Melanie over there, okay? Because, yeah, yeah Melanie's kind of bugging me lately, and so the gravity could be a little different for her, that'd be wonderful. Now, what this says, no, is gravity, you just align yourself with it. You understand it, you're gonna do better if you understand how gravity works. I know, um, well, this is 35 years ago, but I remember uh, uh, being in a Course in Miracles group down in Salem, Oregon. And uh, 
there was one guy who was really into it, loved it. Um, and he decided that he could build his own reality. And so he stepped off a, a, a big cliff because he believed that he would be able to manipulate gravity. And, and he ended up in the hospital and uh, almost died. Um, yeah, the, this divine flow or gravity, the one that's not, not there to be manipulated, it's there to be understood. It's there to align ourselves with. And, and when we do that, what happens is the Spirit of God just kind of works with us. What we can do is we can just understand this divine flow and what we do by understanding it and aligning ourselves with it and flowing with it, what happens is we get to enrich our lives, not because we've manipulated that divine flow, but instead because we went with it. We stopped trying to stop the river. We just sort of turned around and flowed with that spirit of God. Because when you finally reach that, that point where you easily start flowing with life, when you start flowing with this divine spirit that's within you, I think what happens, it's like the, the light of a thousand suns get to shine. It's when we get to live the life of grace that we were meant to.
That was beautiful. Thank you. Now I have to find my notes. That was really pretty. I loved it. All the pages are all mixed up up here. Aha! Found it. Okay, so it is that time in the service when we ask everyone to give of their financial blessings to the church. And if this is your first time here, please know that we don't ask you to give this time. Instead, please just be our guests. Uh, and we always have someone from the congregation who reads our Sunday Prosperity Blessing, and today that is Donna Smith. So come on up, Donna. I'm so blessed to be here with you today. I'm Donna. We've reached that time of the service when we ask you to give of your financial blessings. Now the act of giving serves as a reminder of just how prosperous we can be. Prosperity of every kind is just waiting around the corner for us. Do you know why? Because prosperity and abundance have always rested on one principle. We get what we give and we give what we get. You could also call it the law of reciproca reciprocity, or the axiom of exchange, or the seesaw of spirituality, or the old give and take. Or if you want to be extraordinarily fancy, you could call, call it the quantum shift in the paradigm of our abundance. Lots of names. Same result, we get what we give, and so it is. Namaste. join me in blessing these love offerings. So Spirit of God, we just say thank you for these love offerings. They're important to us, of course. But what's far more important is that we, we keep learning how to move into the divine flow, to, to be one with the Spirit of God that's deep inside of us. And so we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now let's uh, bring our kids in.
why I love all the kids, because that's the future of the Unity Center of Spiritual Growth. And here's Amber, our Director of Youth Education. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So today we talked about flexibility and what it means to be flexible not only in our body but also in our mind and in our, our spirit. Being able to be flexible so that we can be better problem solvers but also that so our mind can be open enough to receive the lessons and guidance from the spirit. Because if our mind is inflexible then we won't be able to receive that guidance and that love from the divine and then share it with other people. So we talked about flexibility as our virtue, and then we also worked on our prayer boxes. So that's what we did today. Now, let me invite you to stand and uh, join hands if you'd like. in the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thanks for being here today.